Hello to everybody. I'm in Riordan Clinic, Wichita, State, Kansas, United States of America. I'm in the front of the entrance, and we can read three words. Health, hope, healing. And this is a slogan for this treatment, natural treatment they are doing in this clinic. And we will show you an interview with a director of this clinic, Dr. Ronald Honey Hockey. Yes. Hello. Yes. Nice to be with you. It's a pleasure to meet you because you are very famous in the world with your treatment. Well, when we speak about uh, conventional medicine, we can distinguish complementary treatment and alternative treatment. And I suppose that your method is complementary. Because, can you explain how works vitamin C treatment? Sure. So, another term that's being used is biological medicine. This is where we are, are trying to use principles of biology in terms of looking at how the body actually works and then developing therapies that are non-toxic to the body but yet at the same time helps to correct the imbalance that's giving rise to the disease or the condition. So just in terms of cancer, you know, cancer is uh, on the rise. There are so many people in the world that are dealing with cancer. There's a lot of different theories of cancer as to obviously we know such things that are carcinogens like smoking or asbestos uh, that can affect the lungs and cause cancer. There are leukemias, there are solid tumor cancers. Uh, generally speaking, we think of carcinogens as being some kind of injury, chronic injury to the body. And, uh, and then that will, will give rise to a cancer. But there's a lot of people who say, well, wait a minute, I've, I've never had any injury. I don't smoke and yet lung cancer will arise or uh, brain tumors will arise. Of course, there people are concerned about all the uh, Wi-Fi and, and the electromagnetic field uh, factors. So there's a lot of confusion about what is the cause of cancer. So you can look at it from an external environmental point of view or you can look at it from an internal point of view. So uh, looking at it from the internal point of view, there is a lot of discussion about uh, how the body may have lost some of its natural immunity, you know, low immunity, nutrient deficiencies. We were talking earlier about vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is, is very common and that, that predisposes towards uh, to cancers, various cancers, uh, if a person's vitamin D is low for a long period of time. One of the most interesting uh, can, uh, explanations here lately is low oxygen. Uh, not so much that the atmosphere is low oxygen, but the human body will become hypoxic over time. And certain areas of the body will become hypoxic. And so there was a Dr. Warburg in Germany that got the Nobel Prize for discovering that almost all cancer cells had shifted to glycolic, glycolytic metabolism because of this low oxygen effect that that somehow the areas of the body that are low oxygen in certain cells will evolve towards glyco glycolytic metabolism and they'll become uh, cancerous over time. So one of the treatments for that is oxidative therapies and it turns out that intravenous vitamin C uh, acts as a, uh, at high doses when we give it intravenously, it has a different effect than when you take vitamin C orally. At a high dose, it acts as a pro-oxidant and it can stimulate healing effects, not only in terms of uh, oxidation and oxygen utilization, but it can restore mitochondrial functioning. It can help the body detoxify. It'll synthesize collagen and help get the, uh, uh, the tumor cell encased in collagen so it's less likely to metastasize. Uh, it reduces angiogenesis. It slows down uh, the growth of blood vessels to cancer cells. Even if it doesn't cure the cancer, there are four independent studies that show uh, improved quality of life in cancer patients. 
And uh, recently in the United States, there's been a number of independent uh, universities like the Kansas University, uh, University of Iowa, Cornell in New York, uh, uh, Jefferson College in Pennsylvania. They have all combined vitamin C IV with chemotherapy and, and it's been shown that that can not only improve the outcome but reduce the side effects. So IV vitamin C is really on the rise as, a, as an effective way of helping people survive their cancer or at least have better quality of life with their cancer and longer life. And, and of course, in the best case scenario, IV vitamin C can be used uh, to promote long-term cure. So uh, it, it in and of itself is not ready yet to say that it is a cure for cancer, but it is certainly a premier adjunctive therapy in the care of cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Doctor, you treated uh, more than 60,000 cases. Well, I've, I've, I've yeah. overseen uh, 100,000 IVCs, but maybe only not that many cases. I've probably, you know, over the uh, going on 30 years that I've been at the Reardon Clinic, I may see, uh, you know, uh, 50, 60 I mean, cases a year. Yeah. So it's still it's still a big number, but it's not as many as like like an oncologist. So I'm not an oncologist, but I'm a primary care doctor who's very interested in improving quality of life, extending uh, longevity of life, and uh, helping improve the quality of oncology care in the world. According to the statistical research, it seems that depression has a significant correlation with a creation of malignant, malignant tumor cells. Uh, did you observe that many patients had this, uh, this problem? Yeah, uh, and it's very poignant that you bring that up because uh, last uh, Friday I had to uh, announce to our staff that a, a very good friend of mine who uh, has written several books on nutrition, uh, Jack Challam, he was sometimes called the nutrition reporter, uh, died of uh, several cancers and he was only 67. And, and uh, part of what we talked about is he was the nutrition reporter. He was very careful about his supplements and his vitamins. He did some IV vitamin C, but he, uh, he nevertheless developed three different cancers. He had prostate cancer, he had lymphoma, and then later on it went into pancreatic cancer that went to his liver. And uh, the, because he was such a good friend of mine, I know that through most of his life he had major issues with uh, relationship problems. He had a broken family. Yeah. And, and at the, in the last stage of his life, his, he and his son, they were working to get back together and that kind of fell apart. And so in my mind, uh, Jack really died from a broken heart. Broken you know? heart. Yeah, yes. and he was probably depressed and grieving the loss of this, uh, these important relationships yeah. in his life. And so, so by all means, uh, uh, molecular treatment, biological treatment uh, alone, I do not think is necessarily the whole story. You need to use a holistic approach, mind, body, spirit, you yeah. know, and relationships, social, those kinds of yeah. things. At the same time, the diagnosis of cancer creates a depression oh. because it's very hard to uh, all these steps uh, to refuse diagnosis and uh, aggressive uh, uh, behavior and so on and so on. Uh, in your clinic, have you any program like, for example, in the United States, made Dr. Carl Simontov? Still, he, he died, but uh, he used visualization, some meditation technique, and also very uh, deeply spirituality. Uh, what do you do with depressive patients here? Not enough. Not <laughs> so enough. we can collaborate. In yes, this yeah, we can do more. Uh, no, I think, uh, I know up in Canada where I'm giving a lecture at the end of this month, uh, I heard a beautiful presentation by a group there that when anyone is diagnosed with cancer, this uh, group of counselors will take them on and, and more or less just review 
their life, their family, their relationships, mm -hmm. their hopes, their dreams, their frustrations. And they were able to show an improved uh, longevity and quality of life regardless of the type mm -hmm. of cancer. So I also, just what you were saying earlier, I, one of my points that I make in, in my lectures is that many people have died of the word cancer. They get said, you've got cancer, and it's like, yeah. they go into a state of shock. Shock, sure. yeah. And uh, what I tell people that I think is very important, and Dr. Reardon used to have a nurse that he would have these patients call, Nurse Selma. Now, Selma herself had breast cancer. So Dr. Reardon would say, I want you to call Nurse Selma. And, and the cancer patient would say, why? He'd say, just call her. And so they would call her, and she would answer the phone, this is Selma. And they would say, yes, I'm such and such. Dr. Reardon wanted me to call you. And she would say, well, do you have cancer? And, and they would say, yes, I do. And then she would say, well, do you want to live or do you want to die? And they'd say, well, of course I want to live. And she says, no, you're not being honest. I want you to really think about this. Do you want to live or do you want to die? Because if you want to die or if you have that secret urge, a kind of a death wish, no one will blame you for dying from cancer. But if you want to live, you've got to really fight. You've got to really work at living because uh, you have now been given uh, what most people fear the most, which is the diagnosis mm -hmm. of cancer. So you've got to be able to look the beast in the eye and say, I want to live. And if you can do that, then I think the, the, the likelihood of success greatly goes up. So if you like prevention. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a psychological therapy. therapy. Of, uh, Psychological IVC. <laughs> uh, now, uh, the question regarding your travels, you are traveling across the world. In which country did you find uh, openness for the application of your vitamin C? Yeah. Level? Well, there's no question that Japan is number one. Uh, Dr. Japan number one. Yeah. Dr. Yanagasawa came to our clinic as a uh, co learner and he shadowed me for one week. He went back to Japan, this was about oh, maybe nine years ago. He now has over a thousand doctors in Japan that are part of a IVC network. So he and developed a network and a good organization. Very good organization yeah. and he does a lot of training courses and so I'm going back for my seventh, wonderful. seventh yeah. visit to lecture this, this fall. And then uh, uh, the Canadians have been very good. The naturopathic doctors and a number of medical doctors have been uh, leaders in using IV vitamin mm -hmm. C. Mm -hmm. There's a number of South American countries that are big in vitamin C. Uh, I have been, oh, uh, Algiers has been amazing as a, doing the, the vitamin C. Korea has done a lot of research in South vitamins. Korea. South no. Korea. So. Yeah, South Korea. <laughs> Uh, and, and I have lectured in the Netherlands, um, and I am going to Prague uh, uh, this, this on summer. June, I think. June yeah. the 2nd. Yeah. We'll be arriving, I think the presentation is later that week, like the 7th or 8th. And so I'm very pleased to be in Prague to present on IV vitamin C. Prague is waiting for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And now the last question, not least. Uh, what are our goals for the future? Here well, in states, in, in your clinic. Yeah, I think uh, scientifically, if we can continue to clarify the mechanism whereby high dose vitamin C helps with the survival in cancer and really all chronic illnesses, I think if, if doctors and patients understand the mechanism, they'll be more likely to, to give it a try or to at least investigate it. The worst thing that I see happening is, uh, is associated with the word vitamin. Because when you say vitamin C, most people think of a little tiny dose. And small doses of vitamin C may be helpful in reducing scurvy, but they are not helpful in reducing more serious illnesses, autoimmune disease, uh, uh, any kind of uh, inflammatory illness, cancer, heart disease. And infections, vitamin C at high doses is incredibly good for infection. Matter of fact, that right now is the, where vitamin C is really being highlighted. There's a couple of big studies out showing that giving intravenous vitamin C to a septic patient 
who has a 70% chance of dying from blood infection, uh, vitamin C is given intravenously is working extremely well, improving quality of, or uh, longevity and survival from sepsis. So I think the, the future of vitamin C is bright. Once people realize that when, when you give vitamin C IV, you're regaining a natural healing effect that every animal has, except that humans, primates, and guinea pigs genetically have mutated the gene that converts glucose to vitamin C. And so therefore, we cannot make our own vitamin C. We cannot make it in adequate amounts in order to meet the challenge of whatever the illness is. So if, if people get that idea that we're regaining a natural healing response with high doses of vitamin C, then I think uh, this will be very helpful to all the chronic illnesses that's being suffered with in the world today. Dr. Hanyoki, thank you very much for this interview. I wish you all the best and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Peter. Yes, thank you.